the end of the Bible, James, John, Peter, these books were written to Christians on how to live their life, not how to become a Christian. So this is teaching that works prevent correction and judgment of God. James 2 agrees with the rest of the Bible on spiritual salvation. Now you guys have probably heard of that, that one-two punch, right? I'm going to teach you the two, four, six knockout. All right? I want you to remember this. When somebody says, yeah, but you know, faith without works is dead. Say, let me show you the two, four, six knockout. Come here, let me show you this, right? Start in Ephesians chapter two, where you guys are at. Look at verse number eight. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Is a gift something you have to buy? Is a gift something you have to pay to maintain, to keep? No. no. It should be a no-brainer. Look at the next verse. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work to save your soul. The only thing you can do is trust that Jesus finished the works, that He's offering you this gift, and say, yeah, I want that gift. Give it here. I'll take it. He's made a promise. Do you want the gift? If you take it, you'll never lose the gift. Now, where do works come into play? The next verse. Look at Ephesians 2.10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now that we're His workmanship, now that we're saved by faith alone, now that we've taken that free gift, God says you should walk in, in good works. God says you should go do those. You should open your mouth. You should go preach the gospel. You should try to live like a Christian. Once you're saved, show those good works. Glorify your Father in heaven by your good works. That's the whole point of that. Now, turn to Romans chapter 4. The 2, 4, 6 knockout. Remember in James 2, he says that, that faith without works is dead. And they'll say, well, well, Abraham our father was justified by works. And we're going to get deeper into that. Acts 13.39, it says, And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. It's either all law or it's all faith. Right? It's either all works or it's all grace. Yeah. You can't have both. You can't mix it. And that's where Peter... And hey, there was one person that, that did it by the law. There was one person that did it by works. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the man Jesus died for my sins and went to hell so I don't have to go. I'm thankful. I trust in that alone. I can't put any trust in myself. Amen. But because I believe that, now I want to live like a Christian. I want to please Him. Yeah. He's done a lot for me. I love Him. Look at Romans 4, verse number 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Right? Remember we just read about glorying. Hey, it, glorying would be me coming to the door and saying, hey, let me tell you how to go to heaven. Look, I, I turned over a new leaf and I quit doing this and I quit going to the bars and I quit running around. It's like, I'm telling you what I did. I'm glorying of my own works. I'm not telling you what Jesus Christ did. And those people that use that method of evangelism, they're, most of them are probably not even saved. There are some people that use it that are saved. They've been taken down the wrong path and taught the wrong thing. And it's foolishness because it's not a biblical pattern. Yeah. The Bible is, let me open up my mouth and tell you what Jesus did for you. And for me, I don't have to tell you what I did wrong. We're all found guilty. Yeah. We're all sinners. We all need a Savior. We all need mercy. So he says, pertaining to the flesh, dealing with works that are visible to men. Look what he says. Hey, you, you want know, to bring your works to God? My, your filthy rags, it calls it. God, look, I got this dirty rag here. Will you let me into heaven? He doesn't want that. He wants your heart. Look at verse number 3. For what saith the Scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Right? Remember, there are none righteous, no, not one, it says in Romans 3. Romans 10 says that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Amen. So it's only through the soul you can become righteous. Your flesh will never stop sinning. Verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Right? If, if somebody mows my lawn for me, it's a debt. It's not a gift. Oh, thanks for mowing my lawn. Let me give you a $20 gift. He's going to say, no, why don't you give me that $30 you owe me for doing the work? You know what I'm saying? It's not a gift. It's a debt. You owe it to him. But to, look at verse 5. But to him that worketh not, 
but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. How do we become righteous in God's sight? How do we get into heaven? By trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That and that alone. Romans 4 is such a solid passage that squashes this perverted view of James 2 in so many ways. We've already been there once. And we'll probably be back again later. But look, look at verse number 6. <coughs> Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. If you never do anything good, you can still go to heaven. Because frankly, you've already done enough bad, right? And you're forgiven for all those things. You're forgiven for everything in your past and in your future. You don't have to try to balance the scales and that's where everybody has it wrong. Turn to Hebrews chapter 6. The 2, 4, 6 knockout. Ephesians 2, Romans 4, Hebrews chapter 6. As you're turning there, I'm going to read you John 1, 12. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. You want to receive God? You want to receive Jesus? You believe on His name, and then you're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. In James 1, he says, Receive with meekness the engrafted Word, which is able to save your souls. Receive with meekness, humbly coming to God. I'll receive the Word. I'll receive this testimony. I want the testimony. I want to believe. Look, you're in Hebrews 6, verse number 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Do you hear what it just said there? Dead works. Now, what does James talk about? Dead faith. So, you have dead faith and dead works. If you're saved and you don't do any works, the Bible is saying your faith is dead. If you're unsaved, but you have good works, those works are dead works. They will not get you into heaven. In context here, he's saying repentance from dead works. Before I was saved, I was trusting in my own works to get me to heaven. I have to repent of that. I have to turn from trusting in my works and turn to what? It says in faith toward God. How did I get saved? By my faith. Amen. What was my repentance? Was it turning over a new leaf and living a new lifestyle? No. It's what I was trusting in. I was trusting in works. Those were dead. Now, I'm putting my trust and my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So when somebody says, well, dead faith, hey, what about dead works, buddy? Right? If you're trusting in those works, you probably have dead works. You probably have no faith. Think about that. 